if you're, if you're looking for some running motivation, you're in the right spot. We are at 11,500 feet above sea level. There's a paved road up here. This is called Guanella Pass. And I'm starting off in the Nike Pegasus Turbos. I'm gonna do four to six miles up here on the paved road and then switch over to the mountain run. Uh, I haven't decided which Solomons I'm gonna take up there. I'm not gonna run in Nikes up a 14,000 foot mountain, but who knows, maybe someday, maybe someday. All right, guys, this is called Beer, Mount Beerstab behind me. It's a 14,000 foot peak. I'm gonna tell you what I did on this mountain three months ago, uh, back at the house when it's less windy, although the wind has kind of died down right now, so you could probably hear me right now. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for it back in the shed. Let's go run up a mountain. It's really windy, so you probably can't hear me, but let's go right up a 14,000 foot mountain. Uh.
Oh, baby. I don't know what the vertical gain was today, but I'm guessing it's about 3,000 feet. That's my guess. That's my guess. 13 miles, not too shabby, in the Nike Pegasus turbos and the Solomon Speedcross 4s. I will say this much. It feels so good to make two good gear decisions in one day. The turbos were awesome. And I'm going to talk more about it back at the house, but they were awesome on the roads up here. And the speed crosses were clutch in the mud and snow. It's crazy. I'm going to talk about the lugs and everything. Oh, I've been dreaming about this coffee for the last two hours. Ugh. By the way, if you have any running buddies out there that might be intrigued to see a video like this one from today, definitely let them know. More the merrier. More the, the more the merrier, as we like to say around our house. Oh, that was hard. Oh. All right, guys. I will see you back at the shed, back at the studio shed, with some shout-outs the, for the comment of the week. And then also, sorry if I'm talking funny, but uh, I can't feel my face. It's kind of frozen right now. We're back. We're back. You guys are blowing my mind. You're blowing my mind. I literally just had to turn the Bluetooth off of my phone because of your comments on Strava and my watch communicates with my phone and it's just beeping and beeping and I cannot record if it's beeping. Thank you for your support, for the comments, for your questions on Strava and on YouTube. Keep them coming. Keep them coming down in the comments below. All right, guys, let's dive in to the FKT. What does that stand for? Fastest known time. Fortunately, I was very fit in July and I was able to run up that very mountain that you saw me on today And I set the fastest known time on that mountain. It was a good day It was a good day and I, I, I tell that to you not to brag But just to let you know like there's so many new subscribers and welcome by the way I am NOT a road runner per se. I'm more of a, an ultra runner and a mountain runner but I'm beginning to dabble a little bit more in the road running scene and I'm excited about that, especially as we transition into 2019. So it's Monday, a little Monday motivation today and I gotta give two shout outs, comments of the week right now, here we go. Dan from the UK, he commented, I think on Strava, I can't even remember where it was. He basically said, I gave you a shout out in my vid today. Genuine, genuinely, your motto and video drove me to get two PRs. Basically, before my half marathon time trial a couple days ago, I said, go out hard. I'm going to go out hard and hang on. And I'm not saying I always live by that in on a race day, but in a time trial, like there's basically nothing to lose. Like you're just, it's just you out there. So Dan heeded that advice. And I guess um, go check out Dan's channel. He's over in the UK. And basically, he ran a 10K, set a PR, but in the process, also set a PR in the 5K. So, Dan, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's what it's all about on this channel. Motivating each other, inspiring each other, everyone to strive for our goals, whether we're runners or not. I, whatever it might be in your life that you're striving for, like, we can do it. We, if we support each other, if we support each other. Okay, second shout out of the day goes to Alex. Alex wrote this a couple days ago. He said, your videos really inspire me, Seth. I've been running for two and a half years and slowly working towards my goal of running a sub 17 minute 5K. I know it's not a half, my PR there is about one hour, 25 minutes. And your time trial efforts really helped me believe I could do it. So this morning, I went out for a time trial and hit 16.45. Oh, I know it's not a great time in the grand scheme of things. Yes, it is. Yes, it, that's a great time. Uh, I know it's not a great time in the grand scheme of things, but I'm literally over the moon. All the hard work paid off for me, and I just want to thank you for inspiring me and giving me that little extra push. Keep up the great work, buddy. Alex, Alex, what can I say? You did it, I didn't do it, but I'm glad that a couple of the old videos that you've watched recently helped kind of get you out the door and go for it. And yes, go out hard and hang on. You know, it sounds like that's what you did. Alex, if you're listening, uh, comment down below and like tell the whole story behind this PR effort. It's just amazing, it's amazing. Okay, I gotta move on, I gotta move on though. So whenever I am wrong on the gear reviews, I'm going to, first of all, call me out. I was wrong yesterday about something, and so call me out and I will correct it, because I don't want to give out bad information. Here we go. 
The New Balance Beacons, they do not have a nine millimeter drop from heel to toe. It's a six millimeter. So I don't know where I saw that number nine millimeter, but anyway, it's six millimeter. Just wanted to correct that real quick for you. That was yesterday's vlog about the New Balance Beacons being a great recovery shoe. And that brings us to today's run in the Pegasus Turbo up in the mountains at 11,500 feet above sea level. I love that place. If you ever come to Colorado, let me know. I'll take you up there. It's just a, a great uh, runnable area of Colorado where, that you can drive to, you know, in your car. So you can get from Denver's at 5,280 feet. So double that and then some, and you're at 11,500 feet at on Guanella Pass and there's a paved road. <sighs> redemption. I was a little concerned because my planter flared up in this shoe last week. It felt great today. I did six miles before switching over to the Solomon Speed Cross 4 and I cannot wait now to put this guy back on probably in a couple days. I'm just running out of time. I gotta I gotta run more I guess. I don't know. I want to I want to try this guy out on the flats here in Denver. I could really feel the comfort and the great um Basically how my heel kind of sits down in this shoe, this Pegasus Turbo. I just have no complaints after today's run. Uh, I'm trying to think of something to critique on it. It was all good, like it felt great. My planter was not hurting. I'm heeding some of your advice about massaging the arch rather than massaging the heel where the pain is at because the arch is where Basically, you need to relieve the tension or the, the tightness of that uh, ligament of the fascia. So anyway, it felt great today and the turbo was amazing. I just, I, that's all, I got nothing else. I got nothing else. I love it. I love it. On to the Solomon Speed Cross 4. Holy guacamole. So this shoe is 18 months old. I probably have, I don't know, my guess is about 200 miles in it. So not that much. It's a beast. Look at the lugs on the bottom of this thing. This thing, and I feel like I just made great gear decisions today. And that leads to the question of the day. What is your favorite surface to run on? Okay. And you might think that's a simple question, but it's actually fairly complex. If you like stop and think about the gear that you have, where your strengths are. Um, I will tell you snow and ice is not my favorite place to run on. That was a, and, but people in Alaska, people in Minnesota, like that's a real deal. Like in the winter, sometimes you're running on snow for a couple months out of the year. So I'm not, I'm not discrediting that as a non-surface. Like put it out there, comment below. Let me know. Uh, that is the question of the day. What is your favorite surface to run on? Grass, dirt, cinder, um, you know, up mountains on like Rocky mountains, um, road, um, concrete, who knows, maybe concrete. I don't know. Anyway, think about it. Comment below. I'd appreciate it. Okay. So the Solomon speed cross four, I probably have about 200 miles in this guy and it's a beast. It's made for the mountains. It's aggressive. The lugs are aggressive on the way down to the mountain today. I only slipped once on that hard packed snow. I only slipped once and I, I, I think it was about four miles down. And so this thing is like made for mud, made for snow, made for that aggressive running. I love it, especially when my planter does not hurt. It flared up a little bit in this shoe. I will, I will admit that, but that's okay. And just so you know, if you're interested in getting into the trails, Solomon is a very, very popular shoe over in Europe. Um, it's not as popular over here in the States. It's, I think it's becoming more popular and it runs very narrow. And so it fits my foot, but if you have a wide foot, like there's a good chance this shoe will not work for you. Um, and I'm not exactly sure if they make wider options for any of their trail shoes, but it is a, it is a narrow fit. Now let's be clear. Let's be clear. I am not comparing the turbo to the speed cross. Let's be clear two complete, it's like apples and oranges, two completely different shoes. But in today's scenario, I ran in both. So that's intriguing. I'm not comparing these. It's not even, it's not even possible. It's not even worth your time. All right. And the key word today is not one word. Rather, it's the surface that you love to run on the most. Okay. So for me, it would be dirt. It would be dirt. I'll comment below with dirt, but what is yours? And it's obviously if you live in the middle of Manhattan, it's a little hard to find dirt there, but you know, what is your favorite surface? And I'd appreciate it. Comment below, comment below. Ladies and gentlemen, I run cause I love it. And I run up mountains 
because it brings life to me. It brings life to me. And I hope you're out there and you're like, listen, you might live in Kansas, so you're not going to find mountains like that in Kansas. But no matter where you live, you can find epic places to run that bring life inside of you. You know what I mean? And that's why I lugged those cameras up that mountain. That's why I took the time to get those shots today. Not to, you know, brag about Colorado, but to show you guys, like, wherever you live, whether it's Manhattan or, you know, New York City or whether it's Kentucky or whether it's Oregon or whether it's the middle of North Dakota, like, you can find your, your place that you love and the place that gives you life. And that's what I love about running. It's so simple, but it brings us all, I think, so much joy when we find that that spot, that sweet spot. Oh, gets me going, gets me going. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thanks for being here. See you.